Welcome to Out of the Blue, number 86. So today, here's the silhouette of Francis I've, I've pointed out before. We're going to talk a little bit about Francis in a minute. Hi, Francis. Hi, Francis. But first, I'm going to uh, talk about a word. I know we like words in this. And the word for today is aesthetic. Aesthetic is spelt A E uh, Aesthetic A E S T H E T I C of or pertaining to or appreciating beauty and art having or characterized by fine taste. This is the scriptorium dictionary. We are in the scriptorium right now. And uh, I'm making my flyer for this show on Saturday, March 12th. Chris Marshall at the Roots Room, Saturday, March 12th, 7 o'clock, 5203 North Kimball. Car songs and love songs. $10 suggested BYOB, Big Blue Star. But what I wanted to point out is the aesthetic. There is an aesthetic of what I do. And I keep hoping people will notice, and now I'm just going to draw attention to it. And the aesthetic is DIY, do-it-yourself, handmade, and more specifically, hand-lettered. So my posters are all hand-lettered, including this one. Because lettering is a skill, and it's a skill that is valuable to have. Ten dollars suggested. B Y O B. Now, speaking of skill, Francis, my step grandmother, in addition to being a magician and a writer and a business person who ran the business. She also sewed in the sewing room, so she was a craftsperson. And I didn't really know Frances so well. I didn't meet her till I was already 19. But we have here an actual real-life magician, Steve Stem. Where are we? Here we go. Steve, you knew Frances. Very well, as I did. What can you tell us about Frances? Uh, have a seat. What, where, where, where do I begin? Is what, what, I mean, I just don't know the order right yet. She was, uh, there's been terms of uh, first lady of magic, uh, which I think applies to her, without a doubt. Um, Frances Ireland Marshall, the first lady of magic. Uh, she introduced me to the world of magic, and uh, she brought me into her shop, and to me, uh, at a young age, the glass counters at Magic Inc. didn't hold tricks or props. They held miracles. I mean, at that age, at that height, at that of those counters, it just was amazing to see these things to me. It was just, I want to know, Francis, what, what is this? What are these? What do these do? What is all this? And she explained to me some of the simple props, the beginner's props I would need. And she says, I know, she, Stephen, you like the flashy, colorful props, but the real secret of magic lies within the books. And of course, she she did give me a, a few books and some list of books for me to get in to read. If you really want the real, real secrets, this is what you do. This is what you do. You read the secrets. You don't buy lefty props. You study and you learn. And that's what I always went by. You know, I always, you know, thanked her for that because it was the truth. I mean, and she always said to, you get out of what you get out of magic, what you put into it. It's very true for every magician. I mean, it's just. So she was an inspiration? Uh, inspiration, I mean, of course she was an inspiration. She just, uh, and that was her life. And she projected that onto, onto other kids that were, in, you know, interested in that type of thing, too. I mean, it's just, uh, and she kind of took me under her wing as a young student, and, uh, just, uh, I always, uh, thanked her for that. I Did guess. you ever see her perform at all? Yes, 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 yes. She'd perform a lot in the shop. And I would go and see her do performances around the neighborhood at, at uh, libraries and things like that. And, uh, 
you ever see her do, because I saw her trick case. Her trick suitcase was here, and uh, I gave it to her family, but it had a trouble wit in it. Tr- a trouble wit. In fact, I was to say, I remember her doing the trouble wits, the fold with the, with the fans and with the hats, and the chapeau act, or chapeau act with the hats and the folding. So yeah. Uh, just unbelievable. She was just so natural at doing it. Just You can tell this is what this lady does. This is what, you know, she personifies. It's just Did you ever read any of her books? I read uh, several, several of them, yes, of course. Yeah, she was prolific. Yes, I mean... Uh, when she wasn't selling props, she was writing books and she was sewing things and she was repairing props. She was she just she did it all. I mean, just yeah, skills. She had lots of skills. And definitely people skills. Huh. You felt you didn't feel like you were uh, an outsider trying to 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 to, to do what she, she made you feel like you were at home, like you were one of one of the guys, one of the magicians, like one of the guys. Right. I mean that that's what that's what's most important. You should make you feel, you know, that you could actually do this. And that that's you know, here I am, you know, forty some years later, still doing it. Cool. Thank you, Francis. Thanks, Thank Francis. So I'm gonna continue talking about Francis, but I wanna here's a book of hers called My First Fifty Years. And this woodcut is actually taken from a silhouette. And if you see the signature, it says Vernon right there. And that's this guy, Di Vernon, D-A-I, who uh, my father knew him as a child. I mean, when my father was a child, he came to their house, and he knew him as Day Vernon. But anyway, Day Vernon cut out silhouettes of all kinds of people. Here's one of Francis, and Steve, you take the camera a minute. He sold them on the boardwalk. He did? The sil- silhouettes, yeah. He sold them on the boardwalk. In where? Uh, Coney Island? Atlantic, yeah. Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Because Dave Vernon, my father knew him because he came to Al Baker's house. Because my, my father grew up in Al, Al Baker's house. Here's a good one of Francis. That's Francis there. And that's Lori Ireland, who was uh, from Ireland Magic. He died and then... Jay Marshall married Francis. She was Lori's widow. But there's a good picture here I wanted to show. Francis looking cute. There's Francis doing her bit. Francis. Here's an interesting picture. Because, uh, we talk about Skeptic Magazine and, and all that. And here, this is Jay Marshall, and here's Francis. This is their uh, one-month wedding anniversary party. So they had been married one month, and in the back here, that is uh, Martin Gardner. So they were all pals with Martin Gardner, because Martin Gardner wrote magic books, and Jay published magic books. Here we have Francis and Jay, and... and uh, Jay's parents, my great-grandparents. Here we have Francis and Steve. Tell us who this is. Hey, I can see through. That's Senator Clark Crandall. Senator I couldn't see through. Clark no, Crandall. Okay. <laughs> and uh, one more. We have um, Jay with Mark Letty, his agent, and, uh, and Ed Sullivan. And here's Francis and Jay at Atlantic City. Oh, there's the coin, yeah. Atlantic City. The boardwalk. So, uh... So, um... Don't look at me. No. Oh, yeah, look at you. Your turn. <laughs> so, uh, you have, sorry to put you on the spot, but, uh, any more, another anecdote about Francis? Oh, that was a quick one. How about, uh, who else, someone else she encouraged in magic? Uh. Or any anecdote you can think of. Okay, here we go. There were certain people at the shop, certain counter guys, I'm not going to mention any names, that would sell you basically anything, no matter it was rather really good or a little junk or not, but. Francis would always distinguish and tell before he would buy something. Francis would always say, "Well, no, Stephen, I think you'd be better off getting getting this." So she'd always be kind of telling you, "No, no, don't buy this junky little piece of crap here." It's no offense, but to the sellers, but uh, she was telling you what to buy and what not to buy. So she was kind of always guiding you with even your purchases. It didn't matter to her about the money. It mattered to her about what was good and what was not good. So. Oh, and uh, and I uh, she got you on TV. My first appearance on TV 
Um, how how old were you? Probably talking about year. Probably twelve. Oh, ten or eleven. I don't know what year this was done. What was the show? It was a show called Mr. Magic and Chippo. A show on Saturday morning TV. It was a kid show. Chicago. Chicago. Channel 26. It came on Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock. It ran for about a year, if that. No one knows the show's ex who was on it. I think me and Al James and the host are the only ones who remember the show. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she was she would call and say, hey, Steven, they're going to have all the auditions for this new television show. Come on down at this place at a certain time for auditions. And and uh, me and my friend, I did an uh, act with a partner at the time. We were call ourselves Hocus Pocus Magicians, the two of us. And we went and auditioned. We got we're, we're on the show right away. And uh, from then on, we were on uh, every other Saturday mornings as the, the kid magicians of that of the week they featured. So, uh, yeah, I always thank Francis for that. And, and after after that, she would always uh, say, let me know when the Channel 2 news is coming or when Channel 11 is coming to do new segments around the shop or something. She would always give me information beforehand if I wanted a little TV spot or something. So... I was on several little TV spots as a, as a, as a younger man, but uh, I always thanked her for that. So You're a child star, then. Well, uh, a child celebrity, I was. <laughs> or so I thought. But uh, it was always cool to go to school like the next Monday after the weekend and say, have hey, other kids say, hey, weren't you the guy in that show? I'm like, like, I was like, hey, I was in the seventh grade. I was already a star. Like, yeah, I felt pretty good. So, All right. Thank you, Francis. All right. Francis, First Lady of Magic. Thanks. Thanks for viewing. Out of the blue. Number 86.